basically we're back from Mondello. Um, we got to play with some really nice cool Canon equipment and it's just to kind of go through what myself and Brian found with it. I was using the Canon uh, R, Brian used the RP but he also used the, the 5D Mark IV. Uh, we used them across a couple of different things. We were, we were basically shooting inside the museum, a little bit of flash uh, photography, a little bit of product and car photography. Uh, then we used it outdoors. Um, we started doing some panning and tilting and just some zoom shots with um, you know, the racetrack itself. So just to talk you through those kind of things. Initially, I, I used the Canon R. I really, really liked it. Uh, I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did. There's a lot of preconceived notions out there. Um, I think Canon have got a, a bit of negative publicity and I think some of it's a very harsh. Um, one of the things they mentioned was that there's a lack of uh, inbuilt uh, stabilization in the camera itself that other cameras actually have. I don't think it's actually an issue with this one. No. For the, for the simple reason that you have stabilization in the lenses anyway, and you certainly get it in the ones they have out there. So we used the 24 to 105, the 35mm, the 50mm. You, you in particular, you, you liked the 24 to 105. Yeah, I mean, it, it was really, it's a really nice sharp lens, and the, the, the stabilization, it just wasn't, just wasn't an issue. Um, but the one thing that I found with both of these, I was watching you taking pictures, especially of Eddie Irvine's Jordan car, and myself as well, that these have your fully articulating screens. Yep. So in order to take the shot that we did of that car, you couldn't do it with a 5D because no. you're just hitting and hoping and you're kind of trying to bin down on the ground or whatever you're trying to do. But with these guys, we just popped them on the ground, tilted the screen up, focused on the car and took the shot. Hmm. So for that situation, it was, it was really great. Oh yeah, well, space was an issue. There was yeah. no way I could get down. Just if you can see it here, if you're trying to get down on the ground to look through the back, that's just not going to happen. Whereas we were able to do that, basically just push the screen back, focus in on it, get a really, really clear shot. And you can pull your focusing across it so that it gets it exactly where you need it to be. So it's pin, pin sharp. The focusing system on this is absolutely, staggeringly, staggeringly good. Yeah. It's very, very sharp. It's very easy to adjust. I'd be very, very happy with it. So that's kind of the difference we kind of found between these two was the, the focusing systems are different. They're for yeah. different things. Yeah. So I didn't use the RP and the track because I felt it would be just a little bit unfair because this isn't a sports camera and never do they say this is for sports yeah. that one can be done but this guy you have your eye focus on it if you're doing a bit of that you know it, it's it's perfect for that type of photography whereas this guy you have a really cool kind of trackpad thing yeah, that you can yeah. use and stuff like that we'll talk about that in a minute yeah. that, that I have to say in its defense I mean when you read the specs and you say right is it for sport I would have always said absolutely not buy yourself a 5d mark 4 get yourself a 7d you know, Mark II, depending on whether you want the crop or the full frame. Um, but yeah, that opened my eyes to it. I mean, I did a little bit of the panning, which we'll show you later on in it, and you know, a couple of the zoom shots I got. Mm. Very, very good. I'm not a pro, so yeah. So we've never done this needs. before. So of course, you yeah. know, this type like I've never done motorsport. But in like terms of like, I'm not. I, I never get paid for the work, so yeah. it's not a necessity. Just using it as a as a as a higher end enthusiast. You can use that for sport. Absolutely. No problem. But the other thing that you liked as well while we're talking about the museum was the colour, the punch in the colours. The punch in the colour. The colour rendition was spectacular. The reds, which are always a very, very hard colour to get, to get an accurate amount of red. It, sometimes they're oversaturated. I thought the saturation level was fantastic. It was highly accurate. It was very, very accurate. It gave a nice gloss finish uh, on, on the print when we printed it off afterwards. You could see the metallic sheen on, on, on the car. It was very, very ac accurate and it didn't burn out. Sometimes you get oversaturated, uh, you know, a rendition of colour and you lose detail. This had it, this you had the detail. Had the, you still had detail in the shadow, like the detail you on did. the tires of the car. Yeah, it was excellent. It still had it. Yeah. You, know, you could still see oh, it. Oh, yeah, it really opened my eyes. Just to let you know, they're bringing out something like, I think it's either seven or eight new lenses in 2020s when they're rumoured to come out. So I think you told me there's 285 mils. Yeah, there's like a, a really nice and neat 7200 that's pretty much the same size as a 24105, which I'm, I'm kind of excited to see mm. that one. And there's a 24 to, is it? To 120, a, I think. 120 or 200. Yeah. It's, it's quite a large range which is probably aimed at the RP for your, your kind of entry level. Yeah. But I suppose it just shows you that Canon are really looking at where they're going to bring this range. It's here to stay and they're going to push it out. So 
this is it in its infancy. Um, but it's yeah. So, but fantastic. between the between the two of them, what do you what do you do? Which one would you buy? From, from my needs, I'd buy the RP yeah. purely because it's small, it's light. Um, I think if you see it here, there's a little adapter on it. Obviously, if you put the 35mm uh, lens onto it, uh, you don't need that. So it would probably be giving you something in the region of about that kind of size. This is the lightest nice full frame. It's fantastic. It still has a lovely grip in it. You can see we're straight onto the sensor just inside there. Um, when you put this onto it, when you put the adapter, which incidentally is supplied with the RF uh, and uh, and the or sorry the RP rather and the R, um, you can then start putting EFS lenses onto mm. it as well as EF lenses. So that's what I found is really great about this camera and who it's for. If you have a 60D, 70D, 80D, and you're kind of thinking about upgrading, before when you had your 60, 5D, all that kind of family you had to kind of get rid of all your EFS glass. That was kind of a big thing at the start, and that was a big barrier. You might have had a 50 mil that'll go on the 60s and 5Ds and stuff like that, but now the barrier to entry is that bit lower because this adapter will take the EFS lenses. So you have yourself an 18 135, you have a 55 to 250, a 10 to 18, it'll go on it. Now, yes, it does use less of the sensor, but you're suddenly using a better camera. And you can slowly build your full frame lenses, whether you go with the RF or you go with the EF, you can build that over time. So it just means that you can hit the ground running yeah. with a camera that's upgradable straight away for 1600 euros. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. for what you're getting in that machine. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's well, really for exciting. me, if I was buying the RP, I would definitely get the 35mm <coughs> lens for it. Yeah. It's beautifully balanced, it's a lovely size. Um, it's actually very similar to anybody that's, that's looking at, let's say, their phone. Um, I was chatting to a pro photographer recently and he mentioned to me that when he's tested it out he feels that what you're getting is a 35mm equivalent from basically a, a, an iPhone and that that aesthetically is what people now like to see whereas I suppose if you looked at maybe 40-50 years ago people liked the 50mm aspect mm -hmm. it's now changed with social media down to 35 but it's definitely one I'd like uh, and go to, and I think yeah, it's my favorite. Yeah, it's right. my favorite focal range. I do whole weddings with thirty-five mils. It's really lovely. It's what the eye sees. It's a very pleasing aesthetic, like you said. Mm. Well, anyway, what I took away from it, uh, I enjoyed using the R for sport. I, I got my hands on the RP and used a little bit of it just for static still shots, and I loved the handling of both of them mm. um, far more than I thought I would. I think you yeah. know what see what it seems to be is that they're greater than the sum of their parts, it's, you know, that yeah, seems to be, with, with Canon's colour science. So if you fall in love with Canon because of the colour re uh, reproduction, the images, this is why you're going to love these machines. So the second part of the of the shoot, we went down the track and we did some panning. So for this one I used, my, I used the 5D Mark IV with a 70 to 200 and Dave used the R. We want to see, so traditionally, yes, everybody knows what you're going to get from the 5D family, it's a given. Right, it's it's great as sports. It has your autofocus case studies. The RP doesn't have the autofocus case studies, but the R does. And what I mean by that is you can go in and you can pick quickly accelerates and decelerates. So you can go in and pick the kind of sports you're shooting. So we set those up. But you had a couple of things in that that I don't have in the five D. Right, yeah. you have that touchpad to focus. Yeah. Did that, you use that much? I did. I did. Uh, okay. Anybody not familiar with panning? Basically, when you're taking a, your, your your camera. Because you have something moving in, in, in the, the background, you try and move with it so that you blur the background and you keep the, the, the subject in focus as it's moving across. So people will do it at different shutter speeds. I shot from 40th of a second up to about 80th of a second, typically. Uh, very hard to get them at a 40th of a second, much easier at an 80th of a second. Mm. Um, you want to be able to pick out, in this instance, the writing on the car. So what you basically, what we were doing is you start and sometimes you're standing, sometimes you're low to the ground, take your pick, whatever angle you want. You basically move with the subject matter and you're focusing while you do it. Now, what I found with the Canon is because it had a touch screen, I could, I, it was far more responsive for me to kind of move the, and push the focus around as I panned. Now, um, because it's mirrorless, I found I didn't need a monopod to do that. If I was using with an SLR, maybe I would, depending if I pushed it down to a 40th of a second. Uh, but I found it very, very easy to do that. We put a couple of little pictures in there that you can see as well, but um, I like so it. So yeah, so what's cool is that, yeah, of course you can use the touchscreen and using the live view, 
and you pull your finger across. But what's really great about this one as well is that when you have your eye up to the viewfinder, you can still use the screen as a touchpad. Yeah. Now people might have had that in the M5. Yeah. It's kind of when it was kind of introduced, but it's in this now, and it's really cool. The other thing as well that people have said is that yeah, if your nose touches off it, it might, but you can actually you can isolate. It. You can disable areas. Yeah. So if you find it when you're putting it up, like people have said, left eye shooters, their nose is hitting the screen, but you can disable that part of the screen, and as you're looking through, you can use the, yeah. the screen. As yeah, I mean if if you've big hands or big mitts, and you put your hands in here when you're gripping it. Um, you, you no longer have the little joystick here. So if you're putting your hand across it, yeah, you could hit it. You can disable that, or you can move it across the pad so that your thumb doesn't accidentally hit it. So it's just changing muscle memory. If you're yeah. going from the 5D, which I was using, and of course I was using the little little joystick that everybody's used to, and you're pulling it across and pulling it back and forth. Whereas this now, you can use your other thumb and you can use it on the screen, but it's far more responsive to be able to do it yeah. the, way you, the way you can do it with that particular one. Yeah. Well, look, you have the 5D Mark III, you have a 200D. If you were upgrading or moving across systems, where would you go? Would you stay DSLR? Would you kind of move to mirrorless? Would you be happy to do both? Happy to do both, I think, right now. Like, I, 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 I really like my 5D because of how it feels, and I love the aesthetic of it. And It's just, as I said there, I've got muscle memory. I'm just used to it. My, my hand is kind of just for focus points and stuff like that. But if I was to upgrade... Um, the RP reminds me a lot of the 200D. I got the 200D because my 5D is for work, it's serious, don't get to have as much fun with it. The 200D was a camera to bring photography back to being fun. And the RP is fun. Uh, and it's kind of it's kind of like the 200D has grown up. You know, if, if, if you watch the Harry Potters, it's like the 200D is Harry Potter in the first movie and the RP is him in the last movie. He's just kind of grown up. A little bit so you got your full frame sensor and stuff like that so definitely for holidays and for fun and things like that but it is a pretty serious camera i mean it's it's excellent in the studio it's an extra entry into full frame photography it's so nice and neat why wouldn't you want one at the price that it's at um so oh, would you look there's nothing out that would touch it at that price point yeah right well anyway look that wraps up a, a day's shooting for us we had fun and thanks to canon for having us uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to us. Cheers, okay. guys. Thanks, guys. See you again.